by Kalinka to Gabriel was, was in fact too strong and rendered him unconscious. As such, Kalinka was forced to use the Martyville site. And there was further evidence of his intention. On the 5th of January, Kalanka called me again and started the conversation by asking me what my decision was. He said, I'm ready for you to drop the bombshell. Don't worry, I'm used to rejection. I responded by telling him that it was over and that we were silly to think that this could keep going. On the very next day, Damon Kalanka went shopping. After the arrest, police did continue further inquiries to uh, re reinforce the uh, prosecution's case. One of the avenues was to approach all of the chemists in the area. One chemist ascertained that Kalanka had purchased two packets of Vicks Headclear and the exact ingredients of the Headclear tablets were exactly the same as the toxicology results from the deceased. So that was the final link in the chain. We could connect him to the drug that was found in uh, Gabe Meyer's body, and that pointed to a very calculated killing. Essentially, the prosecution case was that the two flatmates go out around 5.45 p.m. It seems that very shortly after that, Gabe Meyer returns. Kalanka didn't kill Gabe in the heat of passion. He gave Gabe this drink. He watched him drink it. And he watched him go unconscious. It would have taken 45 minutes before he actually passed out. Just picturing the face that was in Gabe's face and what Gabe was picturing, you know, was this guy standing there and telling him what was going to happen to him? All this going through your mind, well, it just suddenly became overwhelming and it's very out of character for me, but I turned around and I punched the wall. He bound his hands. He bound his legs. He put a plastic bag around his head. By the time that Kalanka has gone to pick up the ute, Gabe Meyer is already dead or well on the way. Kalanka has then wrapped Gabe in the carpet from the garage and placed him in the back of the ute. This is where Singh calls out and asks for a lift to the hotel. And that's when Kalanka says, in about half an hour or so. Kalanka then drove down to the pontoon where he placed Gabriel's towel, shoes, knapsack on the pontoon. Then he throws the watch into the water. He then uh, gives his neighbour Singh a lift to the local pub to cash his paycheck and then drops him back. Then he does a quick trip out to the farm where he dumps Gabe Meyer's body and then quickly drives back. Kalanka arrives home to his flatmates for the 9pm alibi and they go to bed soon after. And that is when Kalanka left the flat to go to the service station and buy a torch and batteries. And he then goes back out where he digs the grave for Gabe Meyer just off the track on that farm. He made a very basic error. He drove too far. The 58 kilometres missing from Kalanka's account that night were the two trips from his unit out to and back from the gravesite. Over the years, I have done many murder trials, and I cannot think of one that has the same mixture of cold planning and cold execution. After more than five hours deliberation, the jury found Damon Frank Kalanka guilty of the murder of Gabriel Meyer. Damon Kalanka was given a mandatory life sentence. 
but the judge warned that the parole board should be careful in considering any application. Kalanka is eligible to ask for that release in 2006. We've dreaded this time for all these years. We know that this man will kill again, and we can't even imagine that any parole board would let this man out. I have grave concerns about that, not only for my own safety and my family's safety, but for anyone else out there. He has done this before. He's done it this time, and he'll do it again. I have no doubt about that.